week's self-love masterclass. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Renee Mullings-Lewis. I'm a self-love coach as well as a Reiki master teacher. And every single week we come back to this channel to talk about all things self-love and energy medicine. I am so excited, not only because I'm doing this video for y'all, but because I've noticed over the last couple of months, we've just had a huge spike in the number of people that are subscribing and joining our community. And that means that self-love is becoming more and more important, something that people understand is not just a luxury, but something that's really necessary for us to live a happy, balanced life. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, today what we're gonna be talking about is codependency. And codependency is such a huge topic. There is absolutely no way that I'm gonna be able to talk about everything related to this issue in just this video. So what we will focus on for this video is three of the common symptoms of codependency. I'm gonna talk about why it's important that we be aware if we have these three symptoms and basically where to start unraveling this, where to begin to sort of move from being totally codependent to being aware that we may be codependent. As I mentioned, there are quite a few symptoms or things to sort of look at to determine if you or someone you know may be codependent. But the biggest one, the one that stands out the most is this one, and it is being someone who absolutely needs to be needed by other people. To be very clear, okay, all of us like to be needed by other people. We're a pack species, so we like to be in groups, we like to be in relationship, and it's important for us to know that other people value us. That is totally healthy. When it comes to codependency though, we're not talking about the healthy sort of everyday kind of wanting to know that you're appreciated. We are talking about someone who really, really doesn't know who they are when they are not needed by other people. In other words, it is almost as if your entire identity and your self-worth is built upon how much you are there for or help other people. Now you can see that already, right? If who you are for yourself is determined by someone else needing to be in a breakdown or needing to be in a struggle or needing to be not well so that you can rescue them in order to feel good or to feel like someone, that right there, that there's a lot of red flags right there. What we're seeing is that someone else needs to be in distress for you to get some kind of validation. And number two, that you need to be the person who is constantly available to people who are in distress in order for you to feel like you matter, in order for you to feel like you're someone. So now I wanna talk about the second symptom, and it is this. You can't say no. Now, I have done another video on people pleasing, and people pleasing falls inside of the realm of codependency. But this goes beyond even wanting to people please or just wanting to make others happy. This is where you feel like if you say no to other people, or if you cannot be there for other people, like you're a bad friend, you're a bad person, now your value to them, you're not really sure what it is. You don't know like if you really matter to this person, or if this person would still be your friend or stay with you if you weren't the hero for them, if you weren't their savior, if you weren't this person that was always their shoulder to cry on.
You can see that there is a huge difference between being somebody who has the time, the space, the capacity, and the energy to be of service to others and someone who even though it may be unhealthy for you, even though it may be putting your own health at risk, even though um, it could be damaging to you long term, even though you don't want to do it at all, like for many reasons you likely should say no, you still feel like you can't say no. When we feel like we can't say no, when we are in this sort of codependent relationship, what it means is that we often are self-sacrificing, we're also self-sabotaging, we are in a constant state of panic and fear, and not only that, we're usually constantly stretched to the max and overwhelmed. Often when we are in a codependent relationship or we are codependent, we put ourselves at risk to save others. And I'm not talking about once or twice or every now and then with a small child. I'm saying that we often neglect our own health, our own personal needs, our wants, our desires, the things that make us feel whole as a human being because we feel that we absolutely must be there and take care of those other people. Okay, and then the third really big symptom or sign that you want to be looking out for is this one, that you hang on to dear life for relationships, friendships, partnerships that aren't necessarily healthy for you. Okay, the third symptom or sign, what I actually meant to be saying this whole time is sign, but I think I've been saying symptom. The third sign that you are maybe codependent or could be in a codependent relationship is that you hang on to relationships for dear life even when the relationships are unhealthy or not necessarily best for your health. Now think about this for a second. We all have a sense of intuition. Whether we feel deeply connected to it or not, we kind of have an idea when we're in a relationship that feels really unhealthy, really dysfunctional. We're not sure if we should be in this relationship or we're very clear that we probably shouldn't be in this relationship. But for some reason, we feel like we just can't leave. Not only do we feel like we can't leave, but we actually feel like panic and kind of terrified and distressed if that person, if we think that person's gonna leave us. So when we're codependent, we have huge issues of attachment. As I've mentioned in the previous symptoms and signs, we're often doing backflips and turning ourselves into a pretzel and doing everything possible just to hang on to this person or this um, relationship. This is the sort of thing that you're doing. You hang on and you hang on and you hang on. You tolerate behavior that is completely unacceptable for most people who say that they love themselves. You don't speak up for yourself and you struggle very much to assert yourself even when you know you ought to. When we look at this topic, one of the things that I think we don't talk about enough is how low self-esteem and low self-worth, or said another way, a lack of self-love, plays into this whole dynamic, how it feeds codependency, and how it is what has us attract people into our life that have us live out the codependent dynamic.
a lot of the times I see people saying, okay, you need to create boundaries. You need to create boundaries, 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 brown boundaries. Sometimes I feel like if I hear one more person talk about creating boundaries, I may just scream. And yet I'm one of those people that I'm always telling people that they need to create healthy boundaries. Yes, it is so important that we create healthy boundaries, but a boundary is not going to save us if we are not doing the work to deal with the low self-esteem, the lack of self-worth, the lack of self-love, the fact that we don't really know who we are, that we don't have an identity unless our identity is wrapped up in the issues of someone else. Cutting people off, taking breaks, separating yourself from others, those are great solutions. They are temporary solutions though. What we actually need to do is deal with the self-love issues. We need to actually go back and look at what happened. When did I first create that in order to be loved, I needed to sacrifice. I needed to give everything away. When did I learn that being a good person, being a good sister, brother, mother, parent, daughter, child, whatever, being a good person meant putting my own needs aside, putting my own self aside and attuning myself to someone else so much so that I could fix and tend to their every need. A lot of people will say it's because I'm an empath, but I want you to know it's not. It's not just because you're an empath or because you're empathetic. It goes way, way deeper than that. There's trauma to be looked at. The place to look is in your family history, in your childhood and with yourself. How do you feel about yourself? right now in your life. In the comments below, I'd love for you to share what have you learned about codependency? What are some resources that you found helpful and were beneficial for you? And where are you at now in your journey? Whether you are the codependent or you are friends with someone or you have a child or someone in your life that you love that's codependent, how is that process going for you? Also, of course, if you have more questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. Let's actually support each other. When you all comment, you help each other out as well. If you really appreciated this video, if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That helps me to gauge and get a really good idea of what topics you want me to continue to produce content on. And last but not least, if you haven't already subscribed, then please, my invitation to you right now is to do that. Because if you liked this video, chances are you'll really enjoy the rest of the videos that I have here and everything that's coming up in the future. All right, well, as always, it has been such a pleasure doing this video for you. You can also find me on Facebook and on Instagram. All of my handles are below and I'd love to see you there too. Until we see each other next time, y'all, don't you forget that we are in this together. Mwah.